don't think people realize how expensive it is to be a professional video creator. Even Apple's base model MacBook Pro 14 inch starts at $1599. Now, unfortunately, as a video creator, you almost have to buy a laptop in order to edit your videos, which is probably the last thing you wanna spend your money on. I mean, let's face it, it's way more fun to buy new cameras and lenses. So I wanted to see if the base model 14 inch MacBook Pro could actually handle the high demand use cases of a professional video creator. So yesterday the new 14 inches officially came out and I went over to Best Buy to pick it up. Now, when I got there, of course, they tried to upsell me to the all new space black 14 inch MacBook Pro, but this one was only available with the M3 Pro chip, which I was not looking for. I wanted the base model, which meant I got stuck with the space gray one, but that's totally fine. I'm not giving Apple more money just so I can get a slightly darker laptop, albeit with a better chip and faster and more powerful, but, this point was actually to see how good the base model was. So we're sticking with the base one. Now, just like anybody who gets a brand new MacBook, I had to obviously go through the unboxing experience. I mean, let's face it, Apple probably has one of the most satisfying unboxing experiences. It's like And then So satisfying. But an unboxing experience doesn't actually tell us how good the computer is. So I quickly set up the MacBook and started downloading some of the most important creator applications that I use on a regular basis. Now, yes, I primarily do most of my editing in Final Cut Pro 10, which is an Apple software. So this one I was pretty sure was gonna work well, but I also wanted to take a look at how other programs would work well, like DaVinci, which is a free editor, and you could obviously upgrade to the studio version if you want to, but I also wanted to test other ones like CapCut, because I know this one is one that more creators are starting to use on a regular basis, especially because it's free and it seems to just keep getting better and better. Now, one of the first things I noticed about the new MacBook Pro is that it looks a lot like my 14 inch M1 MacBook, except for one major difference. See on the left side, compared to the original 13 inch MacBook base model that we had like just a couple weeks ago, you actually have quite a bit of upgrades. You actually have the new MagSafe port. You also now have two USB-C ports on the left side, which I guess you technically did have two on the other one. And you have your headphone jack now on the left side. Now from personal experience, I actually love the MagSafe. Because I have MagSafe, that means that now I can actually utilize my USB-C ports for something other than power. But it's on the right side where we actually see some of the bigger differences. You do have your SD card slot and your HDMI port, but it is missing that third USB-C port. Now, personally, this is still a huge upgrade from the traditional base model 13 inch MacBook Pro that had the touch bar, but still not having that third USB-C port on the side, it's kind of a bummer. I'm sure like a lot of you guys, you might find yourself editing on the go. And so that's exactly what I tried to do with the system as well. I packed it up, took it to my local Starbucks because that's like my favorite coffee shop. Don't judge. But I took it to my local coffee shop and got a chance to really test this thing on the go. First of all, I can say that editing off of an external hard drive on this computer was very easy to do. I didn't find that there was any type of bottlenecks through the USB-C ports and that they were working perfectly fine for editing high-end 8K and 4K footage. Also, this computer has an incredible battery life. I actually was doing quite a bit of editing and testing a lot of different editing platforms, and I was able to do all of that on battery power. And I never felt like the computer was dying incredibly quickly, especially because I was trying to really push what the computer could do. Now, the main reason why I typically like to work off of a MacBook Pro, in fact, my actual working MacBook Pro is this guy right here. And even when I'm at a desk or when I'm on the go, I like to have a MacBook Pro because because of the versatility of it. I mean, there's been plenty of times where I'm out and about and I need to transfer footage off of a camera in order to save some space on a card. And so just having a MacBook to be able to plug a camera into, to be able to transfer your footage off of, and even start tweaking footage while you're out and about is a huge plus. But 
One thing that I really needed to see was how this computer can actually handle high resolution files. A lot of times I find myself shooting on mirrorless cameras and even cell phones, but sometimes I'm even shooting on really big high-end professional cameras. I'm talking red cameras, cameras that are shooting in raw. And so when I'm using these workflows, I wanted to know, could a $1,600 computer actually keep up. Now, when trying to shoot raw, you could absolutely shoot in ProRes raw or in any flavor of ProRes for that matter and get an amazing experience out of the computer. I mean, the chip itself actually has a dedicated part of it just for processing ProRes footage. But I know that shooting in ProRes for everyone, for every job, isn't always gonna be a feasible solution. So I needed to see what it could do with something like Red Raw. Now, recently I shot an entire project for Red shooting on the Red Komodo X. And we shot a ton of stuff at really high frame rates at 6K. And I wanted to test this footage. Now, personally, just so you guys can know, if you want to check out any of this footage for yourself, you can absolutely download it right now for free. I'll have links down below in the description because it's actually being hosted on Red's website themselves. So if you want to download the exact same footage that I tested on this computer, you can go do that right now. But I tested the 6K raw footage on this computer and pretty much here's what I found. To my surprise, this computer actually played back the 6K raw files with no issues. Well, kinda. Actually, there's an asterisk. Basically what I found was if you were working inside of Final Cut Pro 10 and you were using 6K raw files from RED and you set the computer to better performance, it could actually play back that 6K raw footage without any issues even before it rendered out. Now, that said, if you do switch it over into better picture quality, then you will start to see that there are some dropped frames here and there. But when you're editing, I think if you're working in better performance, you'll be totally fine. Now, I did want to sort of push it. And so what I started doing was doing some color grades and started really messing with the footage and trying to add multiple layers of mask and grades. And I found that even with that, as long as I stayed in better performance, it played back that 6K footage without any issues. Now, here is where I did start to see it stutter. Stutter. <laughs> Get it? I stuttered when I said stutter. That was not planned. Uh, um, oh, where I did start to find some problems is when I actually started to have multiple clips of 6K playing at the same time. No matter if I was in better performance and definitely not in better quality, I would find that it would start to drop frames. What I did find, however, was that if I did play it back in better performance, after rendering, it played back without any issues. However, this can be a slightly annoying element within editing. I mean, the last thing you wanna do is to do a bunch of edits and then have to actually wait to see if it actually is gonna look the way you want it to look because it's dropping frames when you try to play it back. So if you do plan on having multiple clips of 6K or high resolution footage playing back at the same time, you probably are gonna start to see some issues. And so who really does this computer work for? I think the easiest way to actually break this all down is to put it into three buckets. First off, you have your beginning creator. This is someone who's shooting primarily on a phone Phone or maybe on a small starter mirrorless camera. I think for you, this computer is going to work perfectly fine. I think you're going to absolutely enjoy it. And at that $15.99 price point, it's entry enough that you're going to definitely benefit from some of the boosts that you get from going with the Pro. Like, for example, you get those fans in case you do start to add graphics and text and things like that to your edit but it's also going to give you that additional storage of 512, which is amazing, especially for this being the entry MacBook Pro. Now, if you are someone who's more of a professional creator, but maybe you're not like a professional cinematographer editor, do I think you could still get away with using this computer? Yes, but I think I would strongly recommend that you do spend a little bit extra that is going to go into upgrading the RAM. That is the one downside of this laptop. And that is the fact that it still starts at a base of eight gigabytes of RAM, which quite honestly, for most cameras that are coming out today, I just feel like a computer at this price point should be at least starting at 16 gigs of RAM. So unfortunately, since Apple doesn't give that to you, if you are a professional creator, yeah, I probably recommend that you still go ahead and at least upgrade your RAM to 16 gigs and you'll be absolutely happy, I think, with what this computer can do. That said, if you are someone who is editing every single day, you're a professional editor or you are someone who is 
working on films that are going to cause you to have to edit for months and months at a time, then I don't actually think you should be looking at this computer at all. Yes, the price point is very enticing, but I think you will actually see a better return on your investment when it comes to investing in the Pro chip or even the Max chip. Pretty much my mindset when it comes to picking which chip you want to go with is I personally think that the Pro is gonna be perfectly fine for most people. Yes, it's the mid-tier chip. However, I think for the cameras that are out today and for what people are needing the computers to do in the world of editing now, I absolutely think a Pro will be fine. However, if you're someone who doesn't wanna buy a computer for at least the next four to five years, that's when I think recommending going to the Max chip is gonna be extremely helpful. It's also gonna allow you to be able to do things that we kinda of see coming on the horizon. I mean, of course, AI is getting implemented into tons of editors, and editors seem to be changing rapidly lately. And so since we don't know 100% what all new features are gonna be added into these editors as we keep moving forward, maybe investing in the Max chip will allow your computer to have a greater longevity and of course, this comes at a much more expensive price, but if you're not having to upgrade your computer every three to four years, and instead your computer can last you five to six years, it might be a better return on investment in the long run. But that's just my opinion. Now, I've already mentioned that being a professional creator is incredibly expensive, so let me tell you guys about a way that you can actually make some money as a creator using today's video sponsor, Uscreen. Now, Uscreen is a platform that allows you to create your own video membership platform. It's like building your own Netflix. You can upload your own content and then choose to have people pay on a monthly basis in order to actually consume this content. And this works really great for whether you're making educational content or entertaining content. Now, I've actually done this exact same thing with my platform, the Creative Fam Academy. It's my online platform where I teach people how to actually shoot videos, create content, and ultimately just become a better video creator. If you're interested in that, that'll be linked down below as well. But with Uscreen, they actually can take your membership and actually port it over so that way you can have your very own custom app. With having your own app, now your audience can take your membership with them everywhere they go. And you don't actually have to go through the process of figuring out how to code it or anything like that. Uscreen will actually walk you through the entire process. On top of that, if all this sounds overwhelming and you're like, I'm not really sure if I can even do this, they have 24 seven support. So you can actually get on a call with somebody from their team and they can actually help you through the process if you are interested in setting up your very own membership. Personally, I think if you're a video creator, you have to find multiple ways to monetize your art. And I think a membership is a great way to do that. So if you are interested in checking this out for yourself, I'll have a link for you screen down below in the description. So that way you can check it out for yourself make some extra money and ultimately pay off the new MacBook that you're probably thinking about buying. But thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you have any questions about the MacBook, leave those down below in the comments. I'll try to add any additional information down there and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. Do you think people actually miss the touch bar? Does anybody miss the touch bar? You know what I wonder? I wonder if anybody realized that this entire video was shot on iPhone.